Hello everyone. CBC exams have started and soon we will have maths exam. Let's do one last time revision with CBC shared class 10's maths standard sample paper. I will explain question 1 to 10 in this video and rest would be upcoming very soon. So let's start. These are the instructions given on the sample question paper. The time allotted would be 3 hours and maximum marks would be of 80. This question paper has 5 sections A, B, C, D and E. Section A will have 20 MCQs carrying 1 mark each. Section B has 5 questions carrying 2 mark each. Section C has 6 questions carrying 3 marks each. Section D has 4 questions carrying 5 marks each. Section E has 3 case based integrated Units of assessment with subparts of the values of 1, 1 and 2 marks each respectively. All questions are compulsory. However, an internal choice in two questions of 5 marks, two questions of 3 marks and two questions of 2 marks have been provided. An internal choice has been provided in the 2 marks questions of section E. Draw neat figures wherever required and take the value of pi as 22 by 7 wherever required if not stated. Let's start with section A and in this video we are going to cover question 1 to question 10. They all are multiple choice question and they carry one mark. Now let's see the question. If two positive integers A and B are written as A is equal to x cube y square and B is equal to x y cube where x y are prime numbers then the result obtained by dividing the product of the positive integer by the LCM AB is? Okay, so before that, let's first find the LCM. What is given? Given is your A and B, right? And X and Y are said to be prime numbers. In that case, what would be the LCM? LCM is going to be the highest of indices of X and Y. So, the highest indices of x here is cube and y is also cube. So LCM will become x cube, y cube. What next we have to find? We have to find the product of these two integers. Now let's simply multiply them. And what would we get? We'll get x to the power of 4 and y to the power of 5. Now what is finally asked? The finally asked question is divide the product of the positive integers by the LCM. So we'll simply do the division. Let's do that. And while we divide, what do we get? We get the answer x, y, square. So option B is the right answer. This one, okay? Let's see question 2. The given linear polynomial y is equal to fx has... How many zeros? I think they are asking about how many zero and if there are zeros then what is the value? So do you know like zeros of a polynomial can be defined as the points where the polynomial becomes zero as a whole. So what we have to find basically is where that linear polynomial is cutting x-axis and the area is here. So how many points it is? intersecting on x-axis it's just one point so here the zero will become one how many zeros are there for this linear polynomial it is one because it is intersecting x-axis at only one point so number of zero is one now to find the value of zero whatever is the value of x on that axis where it is intersecting that will become the value of 0. So here it is 3. The value of x is 3 at the point where this linear polynomial is intersecting. So here the 0 value of 0 will become 3. It intersects x axis at point 3. So the value of 0 of the polynomial y is equal to fx is 3. So for us the right option should be option b. 1 0 and the value of 0 is 3. Question 3. The lines representing the given pair of linear equations are non-intersecting. Which of the following statements is true? Now if the lines are non-intersecting, that means these are parallel lines, right? And if it is a parallel line, then it does not have any solution. Okay? So in this case, there would be 
no solution had it been the intersecting line then they would have been unique solution but these are parallel lines so there will be no solution over here so if you see the expressions over here or the equations over here they are a a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 equal to c1 by c2 and then b is a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 not equal to c1 by c2 now this is our answer option b is our answer here a1 a2 b1 b2 these all are coefficient you can see here that a1 and a2 are coefficient of x b1 and b2 are coefficient of y and when they are not equal to the constant that is c1 by c2 then it becomes a no solution equation so for us option b is the right answer question 4 nature of the roots of the quadratic equation 9x square minus 6x minus 2 is equal to 0 is so let's first write down everything which is given okay what is given given is quadratic equation and we can understand what are the coefficients from it right a will be 9 b will be minus 6 c will be minus 2 okay we know that the quadratic equation is a second degree polynomial equation of the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 and that is where we derived abc and these all are real numbers and x is the unknown variable here and a is equal not is not equal to 0 because we can see it is 9 for the equation this uh the discriminant can be given by d is equal to b square minus 4ac so what i told if it is a second degree polynomial equation where a b c are real numbers yes we can see x is unknown variable that is also there and a is not equal to 0 a is 9 here so for this kind of equation the discriminant is given by d equal to b square minus 4ac now let's find it why we are finding it because by this discriminant what we can find we can find the nature of roots so let's first find the value of d what it is coming b square minus 4ac let's put the value of b as minus 6 a as 9 c as minus 2 we get d is equal to 108 now let's see some conditions if d would have come zero then roots we will call they are real and equal that is not a case here if d is equal is greater than zero which is the case because it is greater than zero then roots are real and unequal okay or we can say there are two distinct real roots if it would have been less than 0 then we should have told that roots are imaginary and unequal but for us it is d is greater than 0 so here b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 so the roots are distinct real here the given equation is of order 2 and so it will have two distinct real roots which one is that option that is option c question 5 two ap's what is ap ap is arithmetic progression have the same common difference okay the first term of one of these is minus 1 and that of the other is minus 8 the difference between their fourth term is so there is a very good formula for that given is two ap's and their first terms are minus 1 and minus 8 and have some common difference let's call that d which is equal for both okay now the formula of nth term is generally given by tn is equal to a plus n minus 1 d here what we have to find first we have to find the fourth term so what would be the fourth term of first ap first ap was a is equal to minus 1 right it is given as minus 1 so let's put the value of a and when we put the value of a what do we get we get t4 is equal to minus 1 plus 3d this is our equation 1 okay same way what we will do for the fourth term we will put the second ap value that is a is equal to minus 
and what we will get? We will get T4 is equal to minus 8 plus 3D. Now we have to find the difference between their fourth terms. We will do the simple subtraction. By doing the subtraction of equation 1 and 2, what do we get? We get T4 minus T41 equal to 7. So the difference between their fourth term is 7. For us, the right answer is option C. Question 6. What is the ratio in which the line segment joining 2 minus 3 and 5, 6 is divided by x axis? Here the values of x are 2 and 5 and y it is minus 3 and 6. So uh, it will look something like this. Okay. The intersection point would be let's say x comma 0 because when it will be intersecting x it will not be on y axis. So y value would be 0. So what we have to find? We have to find the ratio in which the line segment joining uh, this and this one is divided by x axis. So ratio of this is to this we have to find. Let's go one by one. When the line is divided by x axis the intersect point is called x comma y because uh, here y is equal to 0 so it will be x comma 0. We will apply the section formula here to find the ratio of that divided lines. So what is the section formula? Section formula is P x comma y is equal to P 2 m plus x 1 n divided by m plus n comma y 2 m plus y 1 n divided by m plus n. Now let's see the values of x 1 x 2. It is given x 1 is 2 x 2 is 5 y 1 y 2 y 1 is minus 3 and y2 is 6. Are you clear? Now let's put these value in the section formula which I had told earlier. Here m and n are unknown but we know x1, uh, x2, y1, y2. Let's further simplify it and when we will do the simplification what do we get? We get p x comma 0 is equal to p 5 m plus 2 n divided by m plus n comma 6 m minus 3 n divided by m plus n. Here what do we get? We are getting x is equal to 5m plus 2n divided by m plus n and y is equal to 6m minus 3n divided by m plus n. Now here why I have written equal to 0? Because we know that the value of y here at the intersection is 0. That is why we could put the proper equation over here that this 6m minus 3n divided by m plus n equal to 0. We cannot do that for x because we do not have the value of it. So we will utilize this information to solve and find the ratio. And this m and n, what are they? m is this and n is this. And that is what we have to find. We have to find m by n. That is going to be the ratio of the line segment which was divided by x axis. Let's do that. 6m will be equal to 3n. m by n will be equal to 3 by 6. And what would be the ratio of m by n? It is 1 by 2. So the right answer here is option A. So let me be very clear. This is m and this is n. Just in case if you could not understand that. Now is it clear? Question 7. A point xy is at a distance of 5 units from the origin. How many such points lie in the third quadrant? So third quadrant you can see in the figure. But they are saying that there is a point which is say xy. And it is at a distance of 5 units from origin. Origin is the center. So how many such points uh, lie in the third quadrant? There would be many right? I, or I would say infinitely many. This could be also at 5 units distance, this also, this also, like that we can make so many such points. Isn't it? So, there are infinitely many points x, y that lie in the third quadrant at 5 units distance. Our answer is option D, infinitely many. Question 8. In triangle ABC, DE is parallel to AB. 
and if a b equal to a d equal to x b equal to b and e c equal to c then express x in terms of a b and c so what is given let's first write that a b is equal to a okay d e is equal to x fine then b e is equal to b and e c equal to c now what we have to express we have to express x in terms of a b and c here we can clearly see that your triangle g e c is a scaled down version of triangle a b c how come because this g e is parallel to a b and all the angles are same which angles c this angle c is anyway common so it is same and then your bc is transversal so here dec and abe angle would be equal so which angle let me just mark that this one will be equal to this one right and this eventually then this angle will also be equal to this angle so here they are proportionate to each other these two triangles and when the two triangles are proportionate to each other we can use the theorem which theorem basic proportional theorem let's apply that ce by bc is equal to cd by ac equal to de by ab and we are given that c equal to c b is equal to b d is equal to x and a is equal to a we'll simply put the values and what do we derive we will derive x in terms of a b and c x will be equal to ac divided by b plus c our answer is option b question 9 if o is center of a circle and chord pq makes an angle 50 degree with the tangent pr at the point of contact p then the angle subtended by the chord at the center is so what do we have to find we have to find poq and what is given given is this angle that is qpr which is 50 degree it is the angle made at the point of contact by chord and the tangent now one thing we know here we can see op and oq are radius so angle made between radius and tangent do you know that is 90 degree so this is your 90 degree so we have we got one more angle that is angle opr with this information what we can find easily is angle opq let's see how given angle qpr equal to 50 degree we'll talk about it pq is a tangent so angle opr is 90 degree because op is the radius which is perpendicular to tangent pr now let's put the value angle opr will be equal to opq plus qpr 90 degree equal to opq plus 50 degree opq will be equal to 40 degree so we got angle opq which is 40 degree now angle oqp will also be equal to angle opq will be equal to angle oqp also which is equal to 40 degree why because op and oq are radius and they are contacting the chord at these two angles that is why these two angles will be equal now in triangle opq we can easily find angle poq how let's see in triangle oqp angle poq plus angle oqp plus angle opq is equal to 180 degree that is the triangular property now let's put the values angle poq is equal to 180 degree minus 40 degree we found it right and then again minus 40 degree because opq is equal to oqp so angle poq will get 100 degree that is what was asked to us option b is the right answer question 10 a quadrilateral pqrs is drawn to circumscribe a circle okay you can see the circle and the quadrilateral over here and what is given is pq is equal to 12 qr is equal to 15 rs is equal to 14 and then sp we have to find let's call it x okay here you can see pq qr 
आर एस एंड योर पी एस दे ऑल आर टेंजेंट टू सर्कल देन वॉट वील यूज वील सिंपली यूज अ टेंजेंट प्रॉपर्टी वॉट इज टेंजेंट प्रॉपर्टी टेंजेंट प्रॉपर्टी इज पी क्यू प्लस आर एस अपोजिट साइड सम ऑफ अपोजिट साइड आर इक्वल पी क्यू प्लस आर एस इज इक्वल टू पी एस प्लस क्यू आर लेट्स पुट द वैल्यू ट्वेल्व प्लस फोर्टीन इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस फिफ्टीन सो एक्स विल बी इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स माइनस फिफ्टीन सो एक्स इज अलेवन सेंटीमीटर दैट इज अवर आंसर आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी अलेवन सेंटीमीटर I hope you were able to understand all the solutions provided by us. We'll be uploading next video with question 11 to 20 for your practice. So stay tuned and solve with us. Happy learning.